I appreciate everyone coming down here. <clears throat> As you know, things keep changing rapidly here in the county, and we continue to address it, working in partnerships with everybody. And uh, I think it was two days ago, we are at 15. Yesterday, we were at 25. Last night on my way home, we got up to 33. This morning, we're at 41. So we have 41 confirmed positive cases of the coronavirus, along with 126 people under mandatory quarantine and 441 people under precaution quarantine. Like I said, we're gonna hit that peak and then we're gonna go down. So we're just hitting that peak a little bit quicker than any, anywhere else, but I have to assure you, uh, again, I'm gonna commend our Department of Health and all the workers and all the workers that have rolled up their sleeves working here in the county. Um, before I get into some of the cases, and that's one of the reasons why I have Sheriff Apple here and he'll address the one, uh, you know, listen, you can't just close government down and walk away. You, there's, there's essential services. And first and foremost, I want to say to everyone out there, think about the men and women that are our nurses, that are our doctors, that are working at our hospitals, that are keeping the doors open um, of our nursing homes, going to work every day, day in and day out. They, they can't go home. They have to do their job. Um, we have complied with the 50% rule the governor put out. We were working on it for the last three weeks, reducing services, but I let our workers know that they're gonna be home and we may reassign them to other things to help out with the Department of Health who's working around the clock, uh, putting in 15 to 18 hour days other than just going home to sleep and even then when they go home to sleep, we're addressing each other on the phone at nighttime. Uh, so are you really getting any sleep? And the answer is no. So as we go forward, we will be reassigning employees so I cannot have a burnout rate. Because again, this is the long haul. I think everyone should know this. This is, this is a marathon, it's not a sprint. Um, and we gotta just take our time to get there, to answer all the questions, to address the issues that are in front of us, but stay calm. We're also gonna be setting up uh, a line for people to call. Uh, to talk to mental health doctors, to talk to people, because when you start getting isolated or the people that are staying in and you wanna talk to somebody, uh, you're gonna be able to call somebody. Uh, I have said this and will continue to say this. Please, if you know people that live alone, they don't have to be senior, they can be in their 20s. They might not have family or family around them. They might be here and they live here and their family lives elsewhere. Call them up, FaceTime them, chair them up. Be the good New Yorkers that we are and we will continue to lead from the front. Uh, as we continue to look, as you know, cross gates and colony centers are already mandatory in different hours. That's gonna be the norm. Uh, our dining go for our senior program, uh, we already established that the restaurants are gonna deliver the, rest, uh, the food to the people that are entitled to it. Meals on Wheels gotta continue. We gotta continue to feed people. We have to continue to feed our children breakfast and lunch. These are all things that we take into play. That's why when people sit there and say, you gotta shut down completely, we will at one point, look what happened in San Francisco. Mayor de Blasio is making the decision soon to shut down New York City, telling New Yorkers to get ready. The governor's getting probably ready to do whatever he needs to do and we're working with them, uh, what he see fit going forward. But we're trying to be proactive and we're trying to stop the spread. But the only way we can do that is keep your social distance, wash your hands, cough into your arm, and if you feel you have a symptom, Please, by all means, call your, your, your doctors, let them know, they're gonna direct you where to go. They're gonna tell you whether or not um, you have to go to the ER or if you can come into there. If you have any questions, the hotline for New York State, and I said this yesterday, is 1-888-364-3065. And again, that's 1-888-364-3065. 364-3065. And again, we established with United Way, uh, 211. You can call there for anything, and I imagine Sheriff will talk a little bit about the 911 system being clogged up. But one of the uh, cases, you know, again, 25 yesterday, 41 today, do the math. Um, one involved uh, a person at the Treason House. It's the first one we had. It's a separate, it's not in the Treason House, it's a separate place at the Treason Nursing Home. It's for, for respiratory care, and Dr. Willen will answer them questions. Everyone's gonna be tested there on that floor, and uh, we're addressing that issue because obviously that's the most vulnerable uh, population that we have. Uh, that's what we've been trying to do by locking down nursing homes and keeping people away. 
Uh, this is why people, I say to you, I know you want to see your loved ones, but this is the reason why we're telling you not to get out um, because they are more vulnerable. Uh, we have one of the first that I'm aware of, uh, and Sheriff Apple addressed this issue, um, one of his deputies uh, came down with it. So uh, we'll be working with him on that. But for right now, I'm going to let uh, Liza Whalen talk, and then I'll, I'll get it over to Sheriff Apple. Good morning, everyone. Uh, as the county executive, just let you know, we have currently 41 cases. Um, as we continue to track and monitor the presence of COVID-19 in the community, it seems to us that we are starting an uphill curve that we anticipated uh, that we would have with this disease. It is essential that we continue to do the widespread testing that we are doing to give us an idea of how, as a community, this is affecting us. Um, I continue to send the message of empowerment to people and not panic. It is very important that you empower yourself with knowledge, look at appropriate sites for information on our website, the New York State Department of Health website, and the CDC, and continue to follow the behaviors we have reinforced from day one, which is to wash your hands, to stay at home if you are sick and we are now saying that if you uh, you should stay at home if you don't have anything else to do we have many hundreds of individuals in the Albany County region who have been placed under quarantine but we are encouraging those that are home from work home from school uh, to continue to stay home we know at this point that staying home saves lives that is a very essential message that we need to get out to the public. Staying home saves lives. You may not be concerned because you think you are young and healthy and this cannot affect you. That is not necessarily the case. And the second thing you need to know is that even if this does affect you and you get a mild case of COVID-19, being out in the community, you are putting others at risk significantly. The two cases that we are discussing today are individuals that are, first one is a highly vulnerable individual, and the second one is essential to community services. So think about others. Think about the fact that we need to continue with our essential services and we need to protect our vulnerable populations. Staying home saves lives. Now, I want to address uh, the case that we learned about yesterday evening from the Teresian House. We worked with them immediately. This is a separate area of the Teresian House that is for respite patients. It is not the main area of the Teresian House where the residents live. Uh, we rapidly identified the the individuals that are staying there, and I believe there are 15 of them, and we worked immediately with the State Health Department to deploy a team to go out today to swab all the residents that are determined to be contacts and all of the affected staff. In the meantime, all of the usual infection control measures that we would suggest are being implemented. Uh, the staff out there has been great, they have um, been forwarding us information back and forth into the night last night, and we believe that this uh, is not a risk, as I said, to the general population of the Teresian House. We are just looking at a very small set of individuals. Uh, the individual that was diagnosed is currently at Albany Medical Center, and that is the information that I have on that case at the moment. Um, I'm going to let the sheriff speak about the second case, and then I can talk a little bit about it from a public health perspective. Sheriff? Uh, so good morning. Um, first of all, we had a, a deputy sheriff test positive for COVID-19. Um, he was assigned to our judicial center, our transpor uh, transportation division. As a result of that, there's nine other deputy sheriffs that are in a quarantine situation. Um, he's pretty much seven days in at this point. So he feels good. Um, he has weak knees. That was really his only symptom, and he had a headache. And, um, but he's in good shape. We're talking to him. We're talking to his family. He lives with his parents. Um, his, family, his parents are elderly. 
Um, we're talking with all the other deputy sheriffs and we're tracing everything back to everybody that he touched with um, and may have been in contact with. Um, at this point, we don't see any um, huge issues other than taking some precautionary measures. Um, obviously, with the court situation, the courts are currently shut down. Um, we've been dealing with the Judge Breslin on that, and um, we'll be taking alternative measures to um, get everything back up and running. Uh, the deputy did go to the jail a couple of times. We've taken precautions at the jail. Uh, we have uh, roughly right now, anyway, we have 50 people in isolation. The three inmates that this deputy sheriff came in contact with are added to them. Um, we have 65 isolation cells, and we are currently making another 50 isolation cells. So um, we have two positive pressure rooms that are currently occupied with inmates um, that were somewhat symptomatic, um, awaiting test results to come back. Um, listen, folks, I can tell you that we're your first responders. Um, we kind of knew this was coming. Kind of didn't think it was going to come this fast. Um, but we have a, continuity, um, a continuity of uh, operations plan, what we call the COOP plan. Um, most people would never know if we didn't tell you. Um, we've shifted resources. I have deputy sheriffs that are out with EMTs and paramedics today, not for security purposes, but in order to s spread out our medical corps. Um, our dispatchers are safe and secure. We've got 911 locked down entirely. I'm not even allowed in 911. We have an alternative 911 site up and running that the minute there is a sign, we can shift people to that room or to that vehicle. It's a huge command post that's capable of running 911 anywhere in the Tri-County. We can move it anywhere and run 911 for Albany County. Um, then we can disinfect. We've purchased disinfecting equipment, not chemicals, but actual equipment, machines. We've been disinfecting patrol cars, ambulances. Um, we have other agencies bringing patrol cars and their ambulances out as a service to help keep their equipment up and running as well. So I can tell you folks, fire, police, EMS, healthcare workers, um, the Department of Health for the county, Department of Health of the state, everyone is working double time to keep people safe, to keep people informed, and to keep people calm. We don't want to create chaos. We just want people to know, hey, um, keep clean, wash your hands, hot soapy water. Um, we are distributing the governor's um, New York State clean sanitizer as well to all police, fire, and EMS in the area. Um, we have a few thousand bottles of it. We're distributing it as um, appropriately. Um, we're distributing personal protective equipment. Uh, this morning we dropped another delivery off to our coroner's office. So. Um, we're fighting hard for resources. I can't thank the state enough. Dishes has been awesome, very responsive to our needs. We've been working with the county executive to the wee hours of the night and the wee hours in the morning. And, um, and we're working hard. Everybody's, um, listen, we expected this. Um, it came a little sooner than, than we thought on the emergency service end. But we've already shifted and we're already back up and running and nobody, um, there wasn't even a hiccup. So, uh, so thank you. No, Sheriff, thank you as always. I know you're gonna have questions. Uh, I know someone asked earlier, not uh, the email, the student was an Albany yesterday, was an Albany elementary student in the Albany City School System, Pine Hills Elementary. The, uh, the superintendent sent a letter out to all the parents tracking them, and uh, obviously we had to give them time. We'd love to tell you where everyone's at at every given second, uh, but we have issues that we have to deal with because, again, we don't want people to panic. Stay calm. All right, it, it's, it's, we're getting there, but um, Dr. Whalen said it correctly, stay home, don't go out, you know, if you don't have to. Uh, we, we're working hand in hand with the governor's office. Uh, tougher decisions are gonna be made as we go down this road and we will address it. Uh, but uh, again, please stay, stay calm throughout this and um, it's, it's the best thing we can do right now. Let's take a step back, take a deep breath, and evaluate the situation you're in and uh, we'll continue to give you information and continue to give you updates as seen needed but the new norm the 10 at albany med you're seeing tents pop up uh sheriff apple knows this better than anyone else these are like military operations you're going to see more national guard you're going to see more army soldiers deployed uh throughout not just albany county throughout the state and on tv and again stay calm this is the job that we we've trained for it's the job that we've done uh sheriff said it uh, quite elegantly and so did Dr. Whalen at different times. We train for this quietly all the time. No one realizes it. We're prepared and uh, we're ready. To, we've been executing and we'll continue to execute our plans going forward. Uh, we are going to uh, implement the following act. Uh, this only uh, in-service 
in person emergency court filings will be accepted by the Albany County Clerk's Office. All others can be done and continue to be done by our e-recording, our e-filing, and by mail. We have reduced our staff to only essential staff. We have uh, the Albany County Hall of Records is not allowing any public access at all. The Albany County Clerk's Office, again, is, is, is just uh, the emergency court document filings only. And until further notice, we have suspended all passports, business certificates, pistol licenses and amendments, notary public services, and registrar and notary authentications and apostilles. Those services will no longer uh, be existing in our office until further notice, until we can get through this terrible virus that we have going on here in Albany County and throughout the state of New York. Um, we think this is the right thing to do. We know it's the right thing to do, actually. And uh, we ask for the public's support. And we certainly will work with the public in any way, shape, or form that we can when it comes to your court documents that you may have out there that need to be filed with my office. So thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity and to speak and let the, our Albany County residents and the public that serves the Albany County Clerk's Office. Thank you.